Welcome to Insight, produced in partnership with Lakeland Public Television, serving North Central Minnesota. Today we are chatting with Andrea Onstead, Executive Director of Boys and Girls Club of Bemidji Area. Andrea has generously agreed to share some of her experience with us. I'd like to thank you, Andrea, for joining us today. Thank you and for, for the invitation. So the Boys and Girls Club national organization, chapters all over the country, but serving boys and girls and families within a broad geographic region uh, where people are dispersed comes with specific challenges. Talk about the services that you provide in Bemidji in north central Minnesota. The Boys and Girls Club of the Bemidji area serves 600 youth annually, ages 6 through 18 years old. And we serve them with after school programming and summer programming. And we focus on three key areas. One is academic uh, academic support, academic enrichment and success, as well as health, healthy lifestyles, and leadership. And so everything that we do at the club, we've got a technology room and an art room, we have a garden and greenhouse, all of those things wrap up into those three main components about academic health and leadership. And the way that we serve um, our kids is providing this year-round programming experience. We serve uh, the kids mainly out of our clubhouse at 1600 Minnesota Avenue here in Bemidji. And um, of the 600 or so members, about 75% of them are um, 12 and younger, 25% in that tween, we call it tween, that middle school age and high school age. And um, some do come from outside of our area because they're visiting their grandparents or perhaps they're um, they're in transition, but a majority of those 600 kids and teens are from the Bemidji area specifically. And you have quite a diverse group of uh, children that you serve. So talk about the breakdown of, of uh, those children and the specific uh, challenges that, that you face in remaining culturally competent to provide appropriate services. So um, we serve about 50% Caucasian uh, youth. Of and, European extraction. Mm -hmm. And uh, then about 30% of uh, Native American, American Indian youth. Um, about 10% are multicultural, so have more than two or more races that they affiliate with. 5% um, are African American, and then just 1% in the Asian and the Hispanic. On a typical day um, in the school year, we're serving anywhere between 160 to upwards of 215 youth. Um, with structured programming. So they come from school and we give them a little bit of time to kind of like get their wiggles out um, and then we feed them. That's an important component. Um, uh, over 50% of the youth that we serve come from families in poverty. And so that, that, that healthy, nutritious snack um, is very important to them in um, being active at the club and being participating and also just for their health and wellness. Understanding the experience of the youth that you serve or the children that you serve mm -hmm. and being able to provide this, the services that they need so mm -hmm. that they can then have a good experience mm -hmm. is very important. In a sense, you also function as an, as an extension of various services, but now provided through a nonprofit on a volunteer basis. Mm -hmm. So the first being nutrition. We know that kids can do better in school academically when they are not worried and they're not, if they have um, food insecurities. And so feeding them a healthy snack and also some of that healthy snack comes directly from our garden and greenhouse. So our kids are getting the opportunity to actually from seed plant uh, lettuce and tomatoes and potatoes and um, kale and all kinds of vegetables. So they're getting to actually see the fruits and vegetables of their labor and eating that. And um, we actually, uh, there's been many, many kids that have come to the club that have said they are now eating um, tomatoes. They, they never did before, um, either because their family uh, can't afford fresh produce because it is a little more expensive um, or they just don't, they somehow don't have that access um, or it's not ingrained in their family structure of eating healthy. And indeed you were front page news on the Mimiji uh, Pioneer. Yes, just uh, yesterday. With the vegetable gardens. Yes. And there must be a lot of pride associated mm. with, with eating the food that you have grown. Yes, and, and the, the kids are, 
they're doing this. And so we, we do have a couple of um, staff that are, that are helping that, that bring this knowledge and expertise from the University of Minnesota Extension. Um, and uh, we have some funders that are wholly sold on the fact that, I mean, our kids are fighting an epidemic around uh, obesity, uh, childhood obesity, as well as the fact that we are becoming more sedentary, all of this technology. And so we want to provide this opportunity to get outside, get in the outdoors, um, realize that our food isn't just coming from major uh, fast food restaurant right. chains, um, that, that, they're, that they can grow, grow food and, and enjoy whole produce. And actually, there, uh, one of our assistant directors just shared with me uh, a story of one of our club members that was struggling behaviorally um, and had a lot of, um, lot of issues with, um, a lot of issues in school and some of those school issues were rippling to, to the club. And, and so she brought him out to our garden area saying, hey, we just need to take a little bit of break from the stimuli that's happening in the club because the club is a very vibrant and active and fun place to be. But sometimes it can be a little um, oversensory for some of our kids right. that, that have those struggles. And so she brought him out to um, the greenhouse with just a couple other uh, kids. And I tell you what, his, his behavior, his attitude, he, he just was able to calm. He had one thing to focus on. And, and over the course of just a few minutes, um, his, his, his um, behavior changed wholly. His experience at the club um, has been different since then so that we know how to serve them. Um, we have uh, about 60 one-on-one -on -one mentoring um, uh, relationships that are going on. We're serving 600, but we've identified 10% of our kids that are really in the most crisis, need the most help, maybe don't have the family or the financial or the, the, the support network that, that we all would wish for. And so we've identified about 10% of those kids and, and, and my staff, along with some really great community members, are mentoring these kids on a once a week basis and talking to them about setting goals for themselves and in terms of academics and health and behavior and things like that. Um, but it, it's one of those cool things that we now know what that key point is for that young man. That and that's, bringing him into the garden was really a kind of a revolutionary thing. He had never had that experience before and, and how that could um, make his experience at the club so much better. And that's clearly an instance, clearly an instance in which you cannot just exhort a young person towards self-reliance. Mm -hmm. You cannot say to the family, why do you have this problem? Why aren't you solving it? Right? At, 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 at that point, it's really important that other members of the community lend a hand mm -hmm. and intervene mm -hmm. and provide the support. Mm -hmm. uh, how are you funded so that you can provide your programs? Let's talk about that, because that's on the forefront of my mind almost every day. Um, we, this year, uh, just started our new fiscal your budget, uh, July 1st, and our, our operating budget will be $725,000 this year. Over 50% of that comes from contributions from businesses and individuals. The next 20% comes from our special events. So we have this amazing Valentine's Gala, a golf tournament, a couple of other uh, bowling tournaments and so forth. And these are combined events. events in which you're marketing the organization and its value, so you're communicating Absolutely. Telling it. the story. Telling the story, mm -hmm. you're bringing people together, you're, you're delivering fun, a great experience, yes. but you're also fundraising at the same time. Right, and so added on to, so that was 20%, so added on to the 50%, 70% of our funds really come from our, for the most part, our local contributors, our local people, people who can come into the club and see by taking a tour with me or one of our board members or one of our staff, the return on their investment um, to see these children's faces and to know that we are helping them. And statistically, I'll just uh, have you know, Mark, that uh, our kids in Bemidji are eating 11%. Our kids that come to the club right. um, in Bemidji are eating 11% more vegetables than the state and national average, and we attribute that to our garden and greenhouse. But back to the funding por portion, we're thankful to be a United Way uh, agency. So that covers about 4% of our budget. Um, and we do have a, a 
a little bit of government funding, um, but it comes in four main categories. One is we provide these snacks and lunches, and that is a funding stream through the uh, uh, Department of Agriculture. Right. So there's a little, there's a reimbursement piece on when we serve a, a snack or a lunch. So we apply for that. Um, this mentoring program is a federal program um, passed to Boys and Girls Club of America, and then we apply competitively um, for those funds for mentoring, and it's from the Office of Justice program. Um, we have one a small state grant that is only for career programming for teens. So we providing career opportunities, working with our teens on building resume, interest inventory, uh, skills inventory, and then working them to a place where they can secure a job um, or secure enough volunteer experience to have a resume to secure a job. Um, and the last one is um, our county, um, Beltrami County, will fund uh, a portion of our gardening program because it falls within their agricultural sector of funding. What does it cost to sponsor a child so that the child can have this experience? It ranges a little bit depending on the year and the heating bill and the light bill and the cost of toilet paper and the cost of watermelons and all of the things that go into that. But typically in a year it costs between $850 to $1,000 to sponsor a child. So by contributing $850 to $1,000 you are actually giving a child a year's worth of experience yes. with the organization, with the programs, yes. with growing their own food. You're giving them nutrition. You're giving them enrichment programs. You're giving them tutorial services. You have 10% of your children who are getting individualized counseling and, and added support. You're really changing the lives of children who cannot themselves change their lives and whose family need a helping hand. That is our mission, is to inspire and enable all young people, especially those that need us most. Well, Andrea Onstead, thank you so much for sharing your experience at Boys and Girls Club of, of Bemidji area. And thank you. thank you so much for your insights.